This video is all about the tower column optimization process I took to achieve the final result used in the Division B benchmark build. If you haven't watched the earlier videos in this series, I recommend you do that first. In the first part of this video, I will describe my technique for building these columns, and then I will show the testing and analysis that finally achieved the benchmark column. If you watched my previous video on overall approach, you know exactly how I came up with this jig design. I encourage you to design and build your own, but I will include the links to the STL files in the description of this video so you can print mine if you'd like. The finished jig should be exactly 26 centimeters tall. I had to cut it in half as my printer couldn't print it all in one piece. I recommend you just use masking tape to connect the pieces together as shown here. To test these columns on their own, you'll have to build a testing surface with a small hole. It should be big enough for the loading block to fall through, but small enough so the column will fit nicely. I used a 6 cm square hole for mine shown here. Here is the design I chose for the column. There is nothing fancy here, and it builds upon what we learned from last year and from my mini tower series. I am using 5 layers with X-style cross bracing every 5 cm. Since our column height is 26 cm, I decided to have a 5 mm gap on the top and bottom. This is a technique I like to use for all these builds. Use a spare stick that is cut to your nominal length, here that is 26.5 cm, and use it as a master ruler. If you take the time to create your own custom ruler like this, you eliminate the possibility of measuring mistakes for each leg. Here you can see I marked a green registration mark a couple millimeters from the end. From there, I have clearly marked the cross member glue points starting at 5 millimeters and then every 5 centimeters to a final point of 25.5 centimeters. I will explain why I'm using that green registration mark in a moment, but now you can easily and quickly use this stick to mark the actual legs you are going to use for your column. I have found this to be an extremely useful technique. Let's take a close look at this picture. Here you can see I have four legs taped to the jig and each one has dots marked on the two outer surfaces for all the cross member locations and the far right registration mark. So what's the deal with that registration mark and why bother do it at all? Well remember that this column is eventually going to be assembled on a base for the completed tower. That means it's important to have the bottom of the column legs be flat so we have a good surface to connect to the top of the base. Once we have all the cross members glued in place, while the column is still on the jig, we can sand both the top and bottom completely flat. Using this technique eliminates the need for any additional leveling once the tower comes off the jig. This is a very useful technique and I highly recommend you use it for your builds. There is nothing special or especially difficult to gluing the cross bracing. I like to pre-cut all my pieces so it almost becomes like an assembling a kit. Glue one side of the cross bracing at a time and make sure you hold those joints for 6 or 7 seconds each. I like to use the side of the pin I'm using to apply the glue to hold the joint instead of using my finger so you don't accidentally glue your finger to the wood. Don't forget to glue the center of the X joints to maximize the strength of this design. Once you have two sides complete, take the time to sand the excess cross member pieces so you have two new flat sides to work with. Rotate the jig and repeat the same process with the remaining sides. I'm using blue painter's tape here to hold the legs in place. I recommend using that instead of regular masking tape so it's easier to remove and is less likely to damage your device. I found you will have to continually make sure those legs are in place and firmly against the jig grooves. Once you build a few of these, your technique will improve so you can make them perfectly. Here is a completed column still on the jig and after sanding the bottom and top flat. At this point, you can remove the painter's tape holding the column to the jig and it should slide right off. If you have accidentally glued it to the jig, my recommendation is to turn it over and firmly press on the legs from the bottom to push it off rather than trying to pull it from the top. Definitely try to use less glue and take your time so that doesn't happen in the future. Now that we know how to build these columns, I can start to share what I've learned about material selection and the optimization process. I wound up building 12 different columns to eventually arrive at the one used in the benchmark build. Here is a picture of the first 8 columns I built. Normally I don't recommend building a bunch like this and then testing them, as it's always better to learn from your previous build before building another, but I did it here for presentation purposes. As we'll find out, I should have listened to my own advice. 
I knew I wanted to build a benchmark tower that achieved the bonus. That means that the column would need to support more than 15 kilograms. The first question to address was how heavy slash strong did the legs need to be? My approach was to build eight towers using increasing density for the legs while using over-designed cross members. In theory, this would isolate just the legs and I was hoping to get a nice linear plot of leg strength versus leg mass. I used legs with average masses from 0.197 grams all the way to 0.695 grams. And while I did get leg failures for each one, the data was not as consistent as I'd hoped. There is still very good information we can learn from these builds though. So I'll show the high speed footage and details for the first six. You'll see why I didn't bother test the final two in a bit. I will spare you the live video for each one of these columns and jump directly into the high speed footage to see what we can learn. Here is column number one that had a total leg mass budget of 0.789 grams. That puts the average leg mass at 0.197 grams. We can clearly see that there was a leg failure at the top. What was surprising to me was that this column held nearly the full load at 14.982 kilograms. I was immediately questioning the range of legs I chose for this series of tests. Let's see how the next one does. This column used slightly heavier legs with a total mass of 0.858 grams or an average of 0.215 grams. Here we also have a nice leg failure and it held 15.962 kilograms. Now I was wondering if this whole experiment was over and I had my answer. These legs would have been a nice choice for a bonus tower if the cross members could be scaled down to a balanced weight. This test clearly showed that the legs were plenty strong. I had already built all those other columns, so I figured I'd test them and see what happens anyway. This build used legs with a total mass of 0.963 grams for an average of 0.241 grams or roughly 12% more than the previous column. It should easily hold more than the last test, right? Nope. This was the first surprise I got during this testing. It was still a nice isolated leg failure, but it only held 13.686 kilograms. All of a sudden, this would not have been a good choice for the bonus tower build. So what is happening here? It's most likely just the variation in the wood itself. We are learning that even legs of the same mass or more can be weaker than the lighter ones. Let's take a look at the next three column results. Column number four had an average leg mass of 0.264 grams, and now we are well above the full load threshold of 15 kilograms at 17.088 kilograms. Did we finally find a leg mass that we can count on for our bonus builds? We are definitely getting closer, but let's see if the results are consistent. The next build used an average leg mass of 0.308 grams, or almost 17% more than the column that just held over 17 kilograms. Again, we get a nice leg break, but we also see an inconsistent result where this column only held 16.939 kilograms. Still well above the 15 kilograms, but not more than the 17 kilograms of the previous build. This is showing that even at these higher densities, the legs are showing a range of strength. This really highlights the need to pre-test our devices before competitions, even if they were built with identical components we know worked before. This is the final column I tested of my initial eight builds, and you'll see why. While the high speed footage doesn't look that different from the others, our cross members are still holding up well, and we have a nice leg failure, I wound up having to test this one twice by adding extra steel weights to the bucket as it held a whopping 25.242 kilograms. The average leg mass was 0.346 grams, or only about 12% more than the previous column, but it held almost 50% more mass. It's obvious that the strength variation can happen in both directions, and this set of legs happened to be on the strong side for their mass. I decided not to test the final two columns, which had an average leg mass of 0.426 grams and 0.695 grams. These builds might have needed so much mass to break it, it could have damaged my loading bucket, so I didn't want to risk it. Here is my notebook page for all eight of these initial column builds. Let's see if we can draw any conclusions from the data. While the leg strength versus mass wasn't as consistent as I'd hoped, I think we can learn a few things from all these tests. Perhaps the most obvious thing is that if your completed column is anywhere near 3.5 grams, it is way overbuilt and I would expect builds in that range to hold much more than our maximum of 15 kilograms. 
The next thing is that the legs in the 0.20 to 0.25 gram range might work for a bonus build, but are most likely better suited for a non-bonus build where you don't have to hold the entire 15 kilograms. Finally, the Goldilocks zone for leg mass for bonus towers is most likely in the 0.26 to 0.32 gram range, at least given these over-designed cross members. We'll see shortly if that still holds when we choose more balanced material for those pieces. Build number 9 was the first build where I started to think about building a balanced column, that is matching the very light leg mass with very light cross members. Here I chose an average leg mass of 0.210 grams. That was on the light side of the initial builds, but at least one of those builds held over 15 kilograms, so I wanted to see what would happen if I matched it with extremely light cross bracing. I used 1 32nd by 1 millimeter for the cross bracing material, and the total mass of all the bracing was only 0.333 grams. The final mass of this entire column was 1.318 grams and it held 11.699 kilograms. You can see that there is still a leg failure first, but there is also much more movement in the weak cross bracing material. What is interesting about this build is while it would not be good for a bonus build, it was the highest efficiency column out of all my tests at 8,876. This might be a good benchmark efficiency and mass if you are investigating non-bonus builds. Column number 10 also used light legs with an average mass of 0.217 grams, and I doubled the density of the 1 32nd by 1 millimeter cross bracing material, so the mass used was 0.678 grams. The total mass of the column was 1.738 grams and held only 8.631 kilograms. You can see that the back leg failed first. This was probably the most disappointing result of all my column builds and it showed how weak these legs could be. If you recall, build number 2 had an average leg mass lighter than this build of 0.215 grams and it held 15.862 kilograms. My conclusion is that these light legs are very inconsistent, so if you use them, you really need to pretest to guarantee your results. For build number 11, I decided to try much stronger legs with an average mass of 0.307 grams, but use fairly light density 1 20th by 1 20th material for the cross members, with a total mass of 0.400 grams. This resulted in a column that weighed 1.834 grams and held 13.246 kilograms. A decent result with an efficiency of 7,222, but it was not good enough for use for a bonus tower. Again, the high speed shows a leg failure. It turns out the 12th time is a charm. Here is the live video of the test. I really wanted to get a column that I could use for the benchmark build, so I decided to use legs that had an average mass of 0.356 grams, which is slightly more than the column number 6 that held over 25 kilograms. I coupled those strong legs with fairly light cross bracing that only weighed 0.466 grams, so the finished column weighed 2.083 grams. Here is a picture of the final load held, which was 15.128 kilograms. The efficiency of this column was a very respectable 7,263 and is a great candidate to use in the benchmark tower build. In the next video, I will show how I built the base used for the benchmark build, and then finally a video to show how it's possible to combine them for a final tower. Thanks for watching, and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.